Hallo, wie geht's euch allen? My name is Frau Susan Gleason. I'm a German instructor for Excelsior Classes. I want to talk with you a little bit about how, how some German family names, some last names, came into being. Now, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, whatever your profession was, that was what your last name was. So, for example, if you were a farmer, the word for farmer in German is Bawa, Bawa. And Becca is the name for a baker. This is a very interesting one here, the, the last name that means weapons smith, Klingemann. If you were to take this first part of the name, Klinge, and add an L to it, that would give you Klingel, and that is the word that means a blade in German, like the blade of a sword. And then we have also Maurer, Maya, Muller, that comes from the German word Müller, and also the ever famous Schmidt, of course, is a smith. And did you know that a Schneider is the word for a tailor in German? Very popular German name. And Schulze, Schulz, constable, police officer. Then we have a potter, which could be Topfer or Töpfer. The last name Wagner in German, it's Wagner was a carter or a cartwright, and I think that's somebody that makes wagons or makes carts. And then, of course, Weber, in German pronounced Weber, means a weaver. There are two names that mean butcher, Fleischer or Metzger. You might have seen some of these names here in America. And that's not the only way that people got last names. Also, a very popular way, especially up in the Scandinavian countries, is whatever your father's first name was, that is your last name. So here we have this little guy named Simon, Simon. His father is named Arendt. So Simon is the son of Arendt. So he would be called Simon Arendt. Also here we have little Johann here, which is John. His father is Peter, Peter. So he is Johann Peter Zorn. Zorn means son in German. There are also some last names that came from descriptions. Brun and Braun means brown-haired. And I'm sure you've all heard of the last name Kraus. In German pronounced Krause means curly-haired. And of course we have Gross and Klein, also uh, well-known last names here in America, meaning, meaning big and small. Schwarzkopf, it's black-headed. And then the word for heart in German is Herz but they spell it without a T. But as you know, names change, they develop, they evolve. And so this last name uh, garnered a T in there. And also another way that people had last names is where they were from, where they came from. All of you probably have heard of the big muscle man, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, a long time ago, the town you came from, all you would do, you would add an ER to the name of the town and that would be your last name. So there's a town called Schwarzenegg, and I'm not sure if Arnold is from Schwarzenegg. I'm sure his family was years ago. And so you add an ER to Schwarzenegg, and you get Schwarzenegger. Also, you guys are probably a little bit too young to have remembered the Nixon administration here in the United States. Uh, Richard Nixon was one of our presidents, and it was back in the 60s and 70s. And his Secretary of State was a German man. His name is Henry Kissinger, and in German it's pronounced Kissinger, and that came from a town in Germany called Kissingen. Also, your last name could have been a famous landmark, even just a, a, or a bush. Uh, bush in German means bush in English, and also Springborn is a last name, and that came from either a spring or a well or some uh, body of water. And uh, there were some people that might have lived in the mountains, and the last name Berga comes from the German word Berg, which means a mountain. I've really enjoyed this time with you. Once again, my name is Susan Gleason. I teach German 1, 2, and 3 for Excelsior classes. We do have placement tests if your student has already had another German program. And um, we're also offering a foreign language sampler coming up in our fall semester, fall semester only, and we'll have native and near-native teachers teaching you 
the basics of German, French, and Spanish. Now, this is for our younger students, too, that might not know yet what kind of a foreign language they want to study when they get older. And I also offer a German club, and this is a lot of fun. It meets the fourth Thursday of the month. However, if you miss one, don't worry about it. They're all recorded and you can access them 24-7. I also lead educational mission trips to Germany and to some other countries. We're looking at possibly London in 2019, possibly a backpacking trip through Austria. I would love to have you join us for German or any other classes at Excelsior. Dankeschön. Auf Wiedersehen.